Can you see what's happening behind me? Something very dramatic is taking place at the moment. Coming up today, we have live chat with you. And don't forget, Mr. Steve will be joining us after three o'clock. Yes, he will be here. Also today, law and order. What are the laws in your country? And what is the difference between corporal punishment and capital punishment? Also, we will be talking about grammar and the English language. After all, it's just after two o'clock here in the UK. It's a Sunday afternoon and this is Live English. How are you? I hope you are well and happy. Here we go again. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? Are you? Are you really, really happy? Come on, tell me, are you really happy or are you just pretending? Are you putting on a brave face. Oh, I like that expression very much. So here we go. It is a Sunday afternoon just after two o'clock and we are now live on YouTube right across the Internet. Isn't it incredible? Don't you sometimes think to yourself, isn't technology amazing? It really is incredible. So here I am sitting in my little studio on Wenlock Edge talking to the whole world. I hope you are OK and you've had a good week. Guess what? Go on, see if you can guess. See if you can guess what has happened again. Can you guess what has happened again? Something else <laughs> has happened. Very dramatic, all to do with the weather. Yes. We had snow last night, more snow. So it has snowed again. This is the view this morning. <laughs> this is the view that greeted me this morning when I looked out of the window. So there it is. Look, we have had more snow. So this is, I think this is the third or maybe even fourth. Actually, this is the fourth time we've had snow this winter. So we have had a very traditional winter here in the UK this year. So there it is. That is the view this morning out of my window. That is what greeted me when I opened my curtains this morning. Yes, you can see that the snow has arrived again. Do you want to see some more snow? OK, here is some more snow. Another snowy view from my bedroom window. And look at that. You can see that we have had quite a lot of snow again. You can see my little wishing well <laughs> covered with snow. So everywhere is very snowy at the moment. We are going to be talking about snow later on and other extreme things as well. So, yes, that is the actual view this morning. Honestly, we've had more snow. And later on, I will be proving it to you. Also, on Friday, I went for a very interesting walk. Now, you may have seen this at the beginning of today's live stream. Right at the very beginning, you saw me standing in a particular place. We will be looking at that again later on. That is a walk I had on Friday just to show how quickly the weather can change. We've had snow in the past. In fact, around about a week and a half ago, we had lots of snow and then it rained. We had lots of rain and then we had floods. And you will see later on the result of all that rain and snow. You will see it later on. It's pretty dramatic as well. So I hope you will stay with me. The live chat is up and running. Let's have a look at and see 
what's happening on the live chat simona is here hello simona learn faster oh hello there please synchronize your voice i don't know what you're talking about my my synchronization is lovely i've already checked so please don't talk about things that you don't know about thank you very much in fact <laughs> bye oh the snow looks very beautiful thank you very much also pedro is here today we have a very snowy day yes it, you are right sorry mr duncan i'm very very late thank you martha but it is nice to see you as we always say better late than never andrew says today's presidential election is taking place in russia or should it be better to say putin's election yes i suppose we should just go ahead and congratulate president putin for winning the election the results of which have not yet been announced but i i think it's pretty pretty safe to say that putin will be the next president of russia so who, who are the people that are standing against him does does he have any competition does he have anyone standing against him in the election pedro is here hello pedro nice to see you as well marta hello marta the sun is hot in lithuania oh i'm very jealous it's freezing cold here would you like to see a live view of the snow so this is where we will be later i will be later standing with mr steve there it is so there is the view at the moment that is a live view outside and that is where i will be standing later on with mr steve i have arranged <laughs> to be standing in a slightly different location today so there it is look you will see a lot more of that later on so there is a live view from my window just to show you that it is really cold today how cold is it it's colder than a penguin's breakfast that's how cold it is very cold indeed back to the live chat because i'm always accused of ignoring the live chat so here we go let's have another look at the live chat giuseppe says hello from palermo in italy or more precisely sicily pragnam ruti says hello mr duncan i'm very weak in english especially speaking in english well you are not alone many people who are learning the english language share the same problem as you learning to speak a new language can be very difficult for two reasons first of all you have to learn all of the new words and then you have to gain the confidence to actually speak the language so you can see that it can be very very stressful so it's not just about learning the language it is also about having the confidence to speak the language as well so there you go back to the live chat very quickly apparently there are seven other opponents running for presidency in russia and all of them have been approved by you know who thank you tomek for that of course here in the uk we are talking a lot about russia at the moment for various reasons let's just say let's just say if you go to ebay at the moment there are lots of <laughs> diplomats for sale on ebay it's true so if you go to ebay at the moment and put diplomats into the search you will you will find there are lots of diplomats available for sale at the moment on ebay because they're all out of work <laughs> some of them are russian and some of them are british razan is here hello razan i don't think i've seen you here before hello mr duncan you helped me a lot to learn english and improve my speaking 
can we visit you when we come to the UK oh I'm not sure about that I'm a very shy person in real life <laughs> trust me May is here good afternoon from Austria how is the weather at the moment in Austria is it good at the moment how is it because here in the UK it is absolutely freezing would you like to have another look there it is that is a live view outside and you can see that we have had even more snow I don't know why this winter this particular winter has been very very cold and we have had so much snow Tias is here hello Tias yes you have the same problem when I'm speaking English I always feel scared that I will make some mistakes that is a common problem even for native speakers so if you are a native speaker of English and you have to stand up in front of lots of people to give a speech maybe you will also feel very afraid very nervous Mahim is here hello Mahim I can't speak English fluently but I want to well Mahim you have come to the right place because that's what we are all here to do I am here to help you with your English and we are all here together to share our love of the English language shaker is here my weakness is writing in English I can't write beautifully what should I do well you need to practice you need to copy English maybe from a book or maybe from some other source such as a newspaper maybe so you have to just get used to it everything you learn everything you learn everything that you need to speak English or anything in fact takes time you can't rush it you can never rush learning anything uh, hello Mr Duncan great work thank you Domenico and also hello to Rosanna hello Rosanna I like your name by the way Rosanna is watching in Brazil oh yes I want to talk about Brazil if I can <laughs> now last week I went to the shops and I bought some lovely healthy bars some snack bars and I noticed on the front of the container it says on the front can you see it it says sorry no Brazils can you see that there it says sorry no Brazils and apparently they are apologizing on the actual container they are apologizing for having no Brazil nuts now does anyone know why there are no Brazil nuts at the moment does anyone know can anyone give me the answer to that question so why are there no Brazil nuts at the moment you can see there it says sorry no Brazils but why is there a shortage of Brazil nuts what happened what went wrong did something happen maybe it was caused by the bad weather who knows I don't know I have no idea that's why I'm asking the question so it's very snowy today and I thought it would be nice to show you one of my lessons from the last time we had a lot of snow so this thing you are about to see is a lesson that I made in 2013 and that was the last time we had bad snow here in the UK
How is your day going? Is it as strange as mine, I wonder? Right now in England, it is supposed to be spring. Normally by now, the yellow daffodils would be out in bloom and many birds should be busily building their nests or in some cases, rearing their young. But no, none of that is happening here at the moment because here it is still midwinter or at least that is what it looks and feels like. Of course, this is not the first time that snow has fallen this late in the year. In the past, we have had snow as late as April. However, the odd feeling this unseasonal weather pattern produces is hard to avoid. It's worth noting that not everyone will get this extreme weather. The harshness or severity of the snowfall depends on not just where you are located, but more significantly, how high up you are living. The higher the ground, the colder it gets. And quite often, that means more snow. This is a very unusual situation, but I suppose strange things happen all the time. Has anything unusual or strange ever happened to you? To be honest, I find the odd quirks of life quite interesting, and they certainly draw my attention. So maybe I should not worry too much about the weird weather conditions. After all, as we say in English, variety is the spice of life. This is Mr. Duncan in England saying wherever you are and whatever the weather is like in your neck of the woods, stay happy and thank you for watching me teaching you. And of course, a very cold and chilly ta-ta for now. It is a cold day here in England. How is it where you are? Can you believe it? This time next week, we will be preparing to begin summer. I'm not joking. So next weekend, the clocks will change again and it will be officially British summertime next week. <laughs> I, I don't believe what's going on yet outside it is well take a look for yourself there is the view outside right now we've had lots of snow and apparently there is more snow coming there is more snow on the way <gasps> oh my goodness but there is an upside there is a bright side to all of this because this gives me a very good excuse to show you my snow angel.
<laughs> yes can you recommend any tv series uh, i can re recommend a very good tv show called mind your language and there are some episodes available on youtube mr duncan is the best teacher of english i'm not sure about that but maybe one of the best <laughs> i'm just being modest there you see prangramasuru hello to you as well jamelia is here it is very cold and rainy here in algiers oh dear me well i hope you stay dry and warm your snow angel is very funny thank you anna yes i had a lot of fun making the snow angel even though i sadly caught pneumonia for four days no not really so the russian elections are taking place and can i congratulate mr putin for winning so he is the winner apparently <laughs> hello from china oh zhu feng zhu feng nui says hello from china oh yes china is also in the news at the moment because of xi jinping xi jinping will be staying in power forever <gasps> what do you think about that coming up later on we have mr steve yes of course we couldn't have sunday live english without mr steve he will be here after three o'clock now a couple of days ago i went for a walk but it was no ordinary walk because i went down the road to take a look at something very very unusual would you like to have a look at it now if I can find it I will show it to you <laughs> I really do need my reading glasses I've got them here you see I think really I should be wearing my reading glasses don't you <laughs> poor mr. Duncan so here it is this is the thing that I saw the other day down the road from my house and it's something that is very very dramatic I think it would be safe to say that we have had a lot of rain over the past few days here in the UK and can you see behind me there is the proof this is a road not very far away from where i live and you can see that there is now a stream going across the road we call this particular thing ford it is a ford it is where a river passes over a road or a path and as you can see the water at the moment is very high we have had a lot of rain also a few days ago we had a lot of snow as well so the combination of the snow melting and more rain falling has caused flooding throughout this area to occur and as you can see here the water level is very high indeed in fact since arriving here i have only seen two vehicles go across here and one of those was a van and the other one was a tractor sure if you realize what happened then but a lady came from the other direction and she realized that there was no way on earth she was going to try and cross this ford so I had to help her turn around and go back the other way the water is very deep now the sign you can see over there says that the water is about two feet deep but in fact in the middle it is closer to three or maybe even four feet it is very deep indeed
it's hard to appreciate just how ferocious and strong the current is at the moment. This water is really gathering steam. The phrase gather steam means to gain momentum. As you move, you get more energy. You gather steam. You increase your speed. It's not unusual for cars to be swept away at this very spot. So there it was. I hope you enjoyed that. Very dramatic scenes. Very dramatic indeed. Just down the road from where I live. You can see that one of the roads was completely flooded and the river was flowing across. In fact, normally in that place, it is normally a small stream that just gently flows across. But as you can see, as you could see, in the video there was a lot of water and we have had so much water we've had snow we've had lots of rain and as you can see the snow has returned there it is a live view outside the window and that is where we will be standing in 28 minutes we will be standing mr steve and i will be standing in that very spot <laughs> so i hope you will stay with us we are here for another hour and 27 minutes i hope you will stay and i hope you will enjoy all of the things we have for you today including live chat and we will be talking about rules and laws law and order a lot of people said, Mr. Duncan, we like the thumbnail for today's live stream. You look like a criminal. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Have you ever been in trouble with the police? Have you? Have you ever been caught by the long arm of the law? That's a great expression. We actually use that in British English. So we describe the long arm of the law to mean the chance of being arrested or detained so we say I was caught by the long arm of the law <laughs> have you ever been in trouble with the police I can safely say with my hand on my pancreas that I have never been in trouble with the police I've never been arrested having said that it's probably worth mentioning that every time I don't know why this is maybe it's the look on my face maybe I have a guilty look but every time I go through customs at an airport they always stop me honestly I'm not joking they always stop me they stop me they take me aside and they ask me some questions and they even have a look inside my suitcase and it happens almost every time I fly. I have no idea why. I mean, look at me. I mean, I'm so, I'm so innocent looking. I'm so innocent. Look at my dimples. Can't you see my lovely dimples? There they are. These dimples are dimples of honesty. So yes, that always happens to me. I've never been arrested though. That's quite good. I'm very pleased to hear that <laughs> I've never been arrested. I'm sure you're pleased to hear it as well. But have you ever been in trouble with the police? Let me know if you have. Talking of the live chat, let's see who is on. Math Ameline says, Ah, yes, you can be you can be detained when you are driving. Maybe there are checkpoints. So thank you, Math Ameline, for that. Yes, you have <laughs> the long arm of the law. So if you are caught by the police, you have been caught by the long arm of the law. 
Tias says I'm so excited that you and Mr. Steve will be live whilst you're standing on the snowy land well I must be honest I'm actually cheating today I'm not going to be outside <laughs> I'm actually standing by the window because it's so cold outside the wind is freezing Mr. Duncan I hope you say something about the political situation between the UK and Russia well I could say something to Gega I to Gega I love your name by the way I could say something about it but at the moment the situation isn't resolved so the the argument and the the row and the dispute between the UK and Russia is still going on so I, I suppose I can't really comment on it because we don't really know all of the facts but all I can say is that the whole thing is very intriguing very intriguing indeed live chatters oh my goodness we have such a lot of people so many people here today what is the problem between the two countries asks Bella well let's just say there is a dispute at the moment going on between the UK and Russia over a former Russian citizen who was attacked with what is believed to be nerve gas well not nerve gas but some sort of nerve powder they normally call it nerve agent so a nerve agent something that affects the way the body works normally this type of thing will affect the nervous system so that's all we know at the moment and the argument is between the UK and Russia because the UK is saying that it's Russia that did it and Russia is saying we didn't do it and so now we have got into a situation where we have something called a tit for tat situation so first of all the UK said we have to get rid of these diplomats so they sent 23 diplomats back to Russia and now Russia has said that they are going to send 23 UK diplomats back to the UK. So there is a little bit of an argument taking place at the moment between <laughs> the UK and Russia. So, yes, that is the situation. But that's all we know for now. That's all we know. We don't have any more information than what I have just told you. Silvana. Hello, Silvana. Thank you very much for joining us today. Also, Nicole is here. Oh, what is Mr. Steve doing at the moment? Mr. Steve is lying in a dark room at the moment, preparing to join you live in around about 24 minutes. So Mr. Steve will be here soon. Ali Arawali says hello from Saudi Arabia hello to you as well what's the weather like there I have a feeling it might be very warm <laughs> here in the UK it's freezing yes the beast from the east has returned I think it's actually Putin I blame Putin for this cold weather I think he sent it to us as punishment <laughs> that's what I think anyway Ernesto says hello from Bari in the south of Italy oh the sun is shining at the moment in Italy thank you Ernesto I feel very jealous right now so after three o'clock we are going to talk about rules and laws why do we have rules why do we have them well guess what a few years ago I made a lesson all about following the rules hi everybody this is mr duncan in england how are you today are you okay i hope so are you happy i hope so in today's lesson we are going to explore a part of our world that affects all of us every day. In this lesson, we are going to look at rules. The world of rules. Right. 
The most simple way to explain rules is to say that they are a set of instructions which must be followed or obeyed. There are many other words that relate to or mean rules. For example, rules can also be called cautions, commandments, directions, forewarnings guides, guidelines, instructions, laws, policies, procedures, regulations, and warnings. Rules affect our everyday lives, and they are sometimes very hard to avoid. Even in the most simple of places, maybe you are just walking along the street. I imagine it would be hard to miss all of the signs which are posted around, giving warnings and laying down rules which must be obeyed. The most common way to explain a rule is by writing it down, either by listing all the rules in a book, or by posting them on signs which can easily be seen by everyone. Let's take a look at some rule signs, or as they are more commonly known, warning signs. How many can you recognise? Examples of warning signs. No, cycling. You cannot come in here. No, skating allowed. Beware of oncoming bicycles. Do not block this area. You cannot fill your gas cans here. Do not eat this. No smoking allowed. Beware of people crossing the road. No parking allowed. No motorised vehicles can be used here. Do not drop your litter. You will be fined. No children allowed. No photography allowed. Please clean up after your dog. Beware of camels crossing the road. Danger, high voltage electricity nearby. Do not feed the penguins. No ball games allowed. Beware of falling rocks. Danger. Deep water nearby. No spitting allowed. Oh, so as you can see, rules are all around us and we must follow them. Although it is worth mentioning that sometimes people do not follow them. They break the rules or go against them. Sometimes they are caught and often they are punished. If you are caught breaking a rule, you may have to pay some money. This is called a fine. Or even worse, you may have to go to the police station. <gasps> Do you ever break the rules? Have you ever been caught? What happened to you? People who always follow the rules are called law-abiding and people who often break the rules are called law-breakers.
that is all for today's lesson. This is Mr. Duncan in England saying, be good, follow the rules, stay out of trouble, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye for now. Dip, 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 dip. I was just thinking if I can if I can actually wear my normal glasses and my reading glasses at the same time whether that would make things better but I've decided that it doesn't it actually makes things worse <laughs> so maybe that wasn't a good idea but I will be using my reading glasses later because we will be going in to another part of the house to talk about many things today mr steve will be here we are talking about law and order we are talking about phrases and expressions connected with rules and laws also there is some unfinished business yes quite a few people complained about the mystery idioms now last week I gave you the mystery idioms and there they are so there is the first mystery idiom now last week I forgot to give you the answers to the mystery idioms which for which I apologize because I was so excited last week I don't know why but <sighs> the mystery idioms here they are and there is the first one now these are the ones that I gave you last week but I forgot to give you the answers I'm very sorry about that please don't shout at me and there is the other mystery idiom so I will give you the answers to these later on I promise I promise so there is the first one and there is the second one they are well-known expressions in the English language Mr. Steve will be here in just about, yeah, shall we say, 14 minutes from now? 14 minutes, okay. Mr. Steve will definitely be here. And we are talking about law and order today. Also, what is the difference between corporal punishment and capital punishment? We will be talking all about that later on so lots of things to talk about today and if we have time we will also take a look at this word this word has more definitions than most words in the English language there it is can you see it and this particular word has many uses in English if we have time we will take a look at the uses of this word all of that to come later on it's now coming up to 10 minutes away from three o'clock as i mentioned mr steve will be here with me in front of the big window oh there it is look so that's where we will be standing later on as you can see we have had lots of snow yes in the early hours of this morning we had a lot of snow let's have another look would you like to have another look here is a proper view of the snow this morning this is what greeted me when I opened my curtains and yes we have had a lot of snow no doubt about it and also there it is on the ground just to show you now I think the snow that we had this morning isn't as bad as the snow we had a few days ago so it isn't as bad but I think it will be gone by Tuesday so I think by the time Tuesday arrives, I think all of the snow will be gone. The live chat is very busy. Let's have a look. You are adorable, Mr. Duncan. Thank you, Silvana. What I want to know today is why is there a shortage of Brazil nuts? Why is there a shortage <laughs> of Brazil nuts? That's what I want to know. 
Pedro says imagine the world without laws or rules it is impossible to live without rules rules are everywhere in the home in the school in the university in the workplace yes you are right I suppose you have to have rules in a civilized society because you have to have some some form of control you have to have some sort of control over what people do because imagine the world if people could do whatever they wanted without any punishment so I think yes I think we have to have rules especially in a civilized society hello I have a lot of snow in my garden as well says Alice really okay then good afternoon from Dania Alicante oh Alicante I bet I bet the weather there is nice at the moment we need good rules yes of course you can go too far with the rules you can enforce too many rules you can be too harsh or here's a great word draconian so draconian rules I wonder about the Brazilian nuts we hardly can buy them we can hardly buy them here in Sao Paulo says Bella yes I'm just wondering the same thing you see I don't know why I have no idea why there are no Brazil nuts but it says here no Brazil nuts sorry <laughs> on these snack bars now these are very healthy snack bars and they have lots of nuts and fruit but no Brazil nuts and I'm just wondering why what happened why are there no Brazil nuts in the world mm. we are just seven minutes away from Mr Steve I know you are very excited and I know that last week I forgot to mention the answers to the mystery idiom so here they are again I will give you the answers later on and there is the other one the answers coming very soon so I will put you out of your mystery very soon so it's live English and we have lots of things coming your way have you ever been in trouble with the police have you ever been caught by the long arm of the law thank you for your beautiful footage of your snowy landscape you are welcome Ernesto Hendrik says hello from Switzerland oh hi hi to Switzerland is it very snowy in Switzerland at the moment is it very snowy there I think it might be we need rules but they must be democratic says Giuseppe yes I suppose if you have rules quite often people will vote on the rules whether or not we need the rules or whether the law will be passed and then the rules will be enforced if you enforce the rule that means you you abide by it you make it official for example maybe in some countries you aren't allowed to drop litter if you drop litter on the floor you will be fined or in some countries I think in Singapore they have many many rules and laws for example if you throw your chewing gum on the floor in Singapore you will be fined a lot of money a lot of money indeed so yes some countries have more rules than other countries for example in certain countries they have very strict very harsh rules in some countries you aren't allowed to drink alcohol or take certain types of medicine so the rules do change depending on which country you are visiting and this is one reason why you should always be very aware of the rules before you go away if you are visiting a country with which you are unfamiliar you must find out what the rules are you must become aware of the customs and also the rules because you might end up in a lot of trouble 
a lot of trouble indeed thank you very much for joining us on the live chat so many people here today wow speak a little slower mr duncan says carlos <laughs> if i speak any slower i think i will stop <laughs> anna i'm watching oh sorry i'm waiting for mr steve your conversation with him is always very interesting did you see the conversation we had on wednesday night wednesday night we were talking about all sorts of things because last week we lost one of the greatest minds ever ever and i'm not exaggerating there professor stephen hawking died during the week a big shock for many people and we were talking about lots of things the other night we were talking about stars we were talking about the universe we were talking about why light takes a long time to reach us from outer space we were talking about all sorts of things so just in case you missed wednesday night's live stream it is available on my youtube channel as are all of my videos they are all available and you can find the playlist underneath this video so underneath this video you can find all of the playlists and also the links to all of my videos don't forget i've been here on youtube for over 11 years 2018 is now my 12th year teaching english on youtube so if it is your first time here today please let me know please say hello mr duncan it's my first time here i've never said hello to you before what is the idea here mr duncan the idea here off them or off man is to listen to english being spoken and of course this is live so everything you hear is spontaneous i love that word spontaneous if something is done spontaneously it is done without warning or without practice or rehearsal so there you go hassan hello hassan welcome is it your first time here if it is your first time please let me know don't be shy give it a try or else you will make mr duncan cry jifru jifru i think is that your real name hello from iraq hello to iraq thank you very much bayan is here who is watching in damascus <gasps> so far away is it warm where you are because at the moment it is freezing cold here in the uk anja says you have very high quality streaming thank you very much for that yes a few weeks ago i purchased a new computer and now we are streaming in super duper high definition baby Offman. oh thank you for your clarification my lovely teacher thank you <laughs> actually i added the lovely i added it myself mr duncan where are the fireworks <laughs> what why do we need fireworks <laughs> i don't know why we have fireworks today does that have something to do with the russian election hmm, maybe i am very sad because i have asked two questions and you skipped them thank you Ma mahmoud i'm sorry about that i don't ignore people on purpose but sometimes i miss their questions so what about brazil nuts the price of the nuts have rose or risen 61 percent wow that they are some very expensive nuts oh apparently there is a drought in amazon which was caused by el nino the weather pattern that affects the entire pacific region thank you matt for letting me know so that is the reason why there are no brazil nuts in the world <laughs> at the moment and apparently the price of brazil nuts has risen to 61 percent that is so expensive i can't believe it so that that explains why my my chocolate bars my healthy chocolate bars have no brazil nuts in them 
because of the terrible drought that has taken place in Brazil so you can see there it actually says on the box it says on the box can you see it sorry no Brazils mr. Steve is on his way I hope he is standing in the corner of the studio by the window I hope he is there waiting because we are about to move I'm about to go to another part of the studio and I hope you will bear with me but hopefully waiting for me <laughs> will be mr. Steve is he there let's see mr. Steve are you there I am indeed mr. Duncan mr. Steve can you it, hear mr. me can you can you hear me hello I can hear you vaguely in the studio because today for the second half of the lesson mr. Duncan thought it would be a good idea for us to stand by the window looking out over the view because once again we've had some heavy snow overnight and uh, well I wouldn't say it was exciting anymore we're getting a bit sick and tired of all this snow I haven't gone out to clear the drive this time or the road or to help anybody because we've probably only had about two inches of snow and I think it'll all be gone by tomorrow and we don't have to go anywhere today because uh, it's Sunday and we're here doing a live lesson so I don't have to drive out of the car so we're here talking about and Mr Duncan is probably right at this minute twiddling with his knobs in his studio making sure that the levels are right because I know what Mr Duncan is like when it comes to the sound and the vision I can tell you he's got bright lights all over the place here uh, oh he's coming over now and uh, you'll have to tell me what you've been talking about for the first hour Mr Duncan because I don't want to repeat something that you've already said oh there you are hello there oh. hi oh He's got his smiley t-shirt on move as over, usual move over slightly Steve oh, we, need, we need to reposition ourselves that's okay let's just see what's going on we can go actually we can go a bit further back a bit further back there we go oh. there we go we don't have to be so close to each other <laughs> people will talk <laughs> so <laughs> autograph someone wants our autograph yes <laughs> if any of the neighbors go by they're going to wonder what is going on you can move over slightly Steve okay it's okay yes I can I, see yes I can don't <laughs> worry there it is look you can see us there <laughs> yes we, this is a very unusual arrangement because I, I noticed this morning when I woke up I noticed that it had been snowing so I thought hmm let's do something a little bit different shall we so here we are with the snowy surroundings behind us as a backdrop hopefully for the last time hopefully this winter we have had so much snow this year why what is going on we've had four four lots of snow over the past three months and it's incredible it's the, uh, the, the uh, they're dubbing this uh, weather condition the beast from the east they're dubbing it that means that they're that's what they're phrasing it that's what they're calling it it's sort of a a popular sort of uh, phrase that they might term so that a few days ago we actually said the beast from the east and this is the beast from the east that has returned to to haunt us once again so can you see right behind us it is very snowy just in case any neighbors go past <laughs> they might be wondering what we're doing but then there's nothing unusual about that so mr. Steve it's nice to see you here thank you it's nice to see you too I was just talking about the other day uh, we were talking on uh, Wednesday night about Stephen Hawking and we got into a very very deep conversation didn't we about all sorts of things yes we were we were getting very cer cerebral yes we were thinking about scientific matters and pondering the existence of the universe and uh, and ourselves and pondering infinite universe relativity we were going into all sorts of depth about scientific matters yes and, and uh, <laughs> but but not today today we have a completely different subject today we are talking about law and order we talked about law earlier did you see the lesson earlier about rules it's okay Steve just move over I'm, I'm very what Steve does when I'm standing here he slowly gets closer and he do, <laughs> he doesn't realize that he's doing it but he slowly moves over well I can't see see the monitor very yes, well that's there okay we you're on baby you're on 
Everyone oh. can see you. You don't have to keep telling me to move over. Move oh. over. Move over. <laughs> move over. <laughs> He's got very bright lights on here. I can I can't see anything. It's like being on the stage. Of course, I'm I'm used to that. Of course, <laughs> you certainly are. Steve is a thespian. <laughs> what, what did you say then? I said Mr. Steve is a thespian. 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 Thesp. That's what I Th said. T H. Th. Thespian. I said thespian. It's not thespian. But what is it then? It's thespian. Thespian. That's it. You've got it, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting it confused. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting confused with thespian and lesbian. I don't know. It's. <laughs> they are not the same thing. Okay. So let's have a look on the live chat. I'm trying to get the live chat up here on my phone just so we can have a look. So we're talking about rules. And one of the questions I asked earlier was, have you ever been in trouble with the police? Now, sometimes the police might, they might stop you when you are driving your car. They might stop you whilst you're driving. They might mm -hmm. say, hello, you were going a little bit too fast there. Or maybe sometimes they will stop you just to check your car, just to make sure that the car is suitable to go on the road. Mm -hmm. So there are many reasons. Have you ever been stopped by the police, Mr. I've, Duncan? I've never been stopped by the police. Oh, no, wait there. Many years ago, I was stopped by the police on my motorbike. So that did happen, I think, a couple of times. But I mentioned earlier as well that whenever I go through an airport, through the customs of an airport, mm -hmm. I always get stopped. I always get stopped. He does. And I think I know why. Why? It's because you wear, you always wear your cap and you always look like, let's just say you don't look like an upstanding member of society in the <laughs> way that you dress. You see, I think if you go through an airport looking very smart, wearing a suit, uh, a certain type of look will mean that you will probably just go through and nobody will bat an eyelid. Nobody will look at you twice or think there's anything suspicious. Whereas if you go with like an old rucksack, you look a bit scruffy, you wear a hat like that, immediately all the authorities think, hmm, I wonder if he's got drugs. Yes, but, but I don't know why, but it's everywhere. And I don't always dress scruffy. Well, Mr. Steve is... <laughs> Everyone dressed. Who, who, you do when you're going when onto they, an aeroplane. But everyone looks scruffy. That still is unfair because everyone wears old clothes. Nobody gets on the plane looking wearing a suit. And if you're on your own, if you're a male traveling alone, wearing a hat, maybe that, you know, there's the possibility that inside that rucksack you've concealed some illegal drugs, which of course you never would do. Everyone's asking That's if Mr. Mr. Steve, can you move over slightly to hide the reflection? Where what reflection? It? There it is. That's better. There's oh, because of the big light. Oh, that's better. Is that better for you? You see, I knew I should have been further over. That's it. Try, stay in that place, apparently. <laughs> apparently everyone right. is very pleased now that you have blocked the annoying light. So now, oh. but now also I'll have, I'll have to use the mi move the microphone. I have to move the microphone. That's it. You stayed in there. Oh, you always move it. He always moves it towards him himself that's okay so that he can be heard and i can't scruffy what does scruffy mean if someone is scruffy scruffy they are untidy they look very dirty their clothes are old <laughs> they look very disheveled 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 see i'm wearing a, a shirt with a collar so immediately i am looking smart and presentable no. Uh, you're wearing some old scruffy T-shirt from about 19... This isn't scruff. <laughs> this is lovely, this T-shirt. The people around the world love this T-shirt. This T-shirt... This T-shirt is so famous, it has its own fan club now. You could sell that, probably, and auction it on eBay and get a lot of money for it. Oh, i tell you what's for sale on eBay. There are lots of... Lots of diplomats for sale on eBay. You can get some Russian diplomats oh. and some, some UK diplomats. They're for sale at the moment. They have <laughs> nothing to do. They're just standing around. And, and so someone is selling them on eBay. So if you want to buy yourself a nice Russian diplomat or a, a UK diplomat, they are for sale at the moment on eBay. I was thinking about that. I mean, these diplomats, we don't really, I was thinking about it. They've probably been working in these countries for many years. They've probably got 
a life there. They might even have a partner. They, they used to, you know, they could have been there for two or three years or more. I think so. And then suddenly to be thrown out of the country means their entire lives are turned upside down, uh, I would have thought. So it must be quite stressful because of, uh, well, we don't really know what's going on. We, we never will know, of course. <laughs> no, and I think it's too early. I, I, many people have asked already this. They've said, Mr. Oh. Duncan, Mr. Duncan, can you tell us what you think about it? Well, the situation is still ongoing, so there isn't a solution yet. There isn't any solution to it. So it is still ongoing. It hasn't been resolved. I think we've pretty much made up our mind. When I say we, I mean the government. No, not this us. <laughs> we, uh, we, we, we have no say in what happens in the UK. Just in case, not. just in case anyone in Russia is watching mm. and you think we are, we are the government. We're not. OK, we're just a couple of couple of human beings that happen to live in the UK. It's the same with any conflict between countries. It's that the people always suffer. And the, it, it's the governments that fall out with each other. Yes. Uh, and the people, we just get on with it. So, you know, we've got no hard feelings against the Russians. I'm sure they haven't uh, against us. It's just political parties and regimes That's it. not getting on together. Yes. Well, it happens. I, I think sometimes world leaders act like children. They're, they're, they're just like children squabbling. But of course, in this situation, we are talking about the uh, the attempt on someone's life so th th this is attempted murder so I suppose mm. you might say that this is quite a, a serious situation in using a nerve agent a nerve in, agent in a city <laughs> so I mean if it's true it's pretty serious yes. but uh, no, anyway do you I don't think we need to comment any further I don't that. need to we don't want don't to uh, upset anyone no, I don't, nobody cares that at least when you come here you get straight talking. You don't get any pretending. You, you, you see, you get what you see and you see what you get. That's what I say. But do you remember? Course, uh, uh, sorry, I was going to say that the, 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 the media uh, are also because we described the weather condition uh, a few weeks ago, the, this very cold wind from Siberia, from Russia as the beast from the east. Uh, we're also uh, the, the press have also uh, decided to call Vladimir Putin <laughs> the beast from the east as well, haven't they? Well, they I sort of liken him to a, a cold storm coming in from the east. I said earlier, I said earlier that I think Putin has sent this cold weather. I think so. He sent it to us <laughs> to punish us. I think so. Let me just move that down because you're going to hear a horrible noise right there. He's obsessed with his microphone. No, I'm not obsessed with it. I'm, I, I just want it to sound OK so people aren't going, what? I can't hear what you're saying. Mr. Well, are they saying they can't hear us? No. Well, then it's all right. But they're, they're very, very kind, you see. They don't want to upset me. See, it's pointing directly to you. It's pointing away from me. It isn't. It's pointing <laughs> it. It's not really pointing at either of us, to be honest. It, it could do with I'm coming. It could do with coming down slightly. So I'll get up on my tiptoes. Mr. Like Duncan. That. Yes. Hello. Your T-shirt. It shows us your good humour. Exactly. So we are talking about rules. First of all, there are two things that exist in rules and law around the world. And one of them is corporal punishment. Corporal punishment, yes. And the other one is capital punishment. Mm, right. And there is a very important difference between the two. First of all, corporal punishment is punishment that is given out uh, harshly. So harsh punishment is often seen as being corporal punishment. For example, in schools, and I remember this from my days at school, we used to actually have the cane so if you were misbehaving or being naughty or you did something very bad at school they would whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. they would whip you they would cane you yes a across your bottom across your bottom or across your hand yes or you had to hold your hand out and they would whoosh, hit you across the hand sometimes they would use a cane and other times they would use something else like a ruler. So they would hit you across the hand with a ruler. We had a teacher that would throw chalk at you <laughs> if, uh, if you were naughty. And sometimes it would. Uh, no, he used to throw the, the, the chalk, uh, the, the rubber 
the, the, the eraser, the chalk eraser, which was like a felt pad on a, on a block of wood. And you used to throw that at people, that hit you on your head. I tell you, that was quite painful. So, so the chalkboard eraser. The chalkboard eraser, causing it. We uh, don't have those anymore. Uh, it's all on uh, whiteboards, I would imagine. That's it. It's all on whiteboards. It's all on whiteboards. Or, or quite, quite actually, that even that's behind the times now. Really? They don't have whiteboards anymore in the classroom. They have they have projectors and big TVs. Giant iPads hanging <laughs> from the. Uh, did you used to? Did you? Were you ever caned at school, Mr. Duncan? I was punished. I was right. punished once at school when I was at infant school. Some some children were pulling on a tree and they snapped a branch off the tree and the teacher saw this happen and they rounded us up. They 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 got us all and took us to <laughs> this is very distracting when you carry on. I'll yeah, read this. Please don't punch all of the numbers and things on there. Please be very gentle with the phone. So I'm trying to tell a story here and I can't remember where I was now. So. We were, the we, tree branch broke off. We, we broke the branch off the tree and the, we had to go to the headmistress, not headmaster. We actually had a, a, a lady headmistress. So and, and she punished us all. So all of us were punished. And I always thought that that was very unfair because I had nothing to do with it. So I had to hold my hand out and she slapped my hand three times. So when I was and, and I was only very young, I was only about six years old. So can you imagine that you're six years old and you're being beaten by your headmistress? Some boys would enjoy that, <laughs> wouldn't they? Oh, miss, I've been a naughty boy. You better cane me. Some people would like that in a perverse sort of way. Yeah, I think yeah. I know who. No, not me. I'm not sure about that now. No, that's it. Does wearing inappropriate clothes matter in England, says Asha. There are certain decency laws. For example, if you are a lady, you have to cover your your breasts and uh, down below as well must be pretty well covered. But I think around the back nowadays, a lot of ladies wear, wear something called a thong. Which 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 shows everything at the back. So on the beach, maybe if you if they are sunbathing, you might see a lady wearing something on top, a bra or a bikini, and then lower down, the front is covered, but the back is exposed. You can see their bottom. Yes, yeah. I, I think if you were if you were to go uh, naked down the high street uh in a shopping center you would be arrested you would definitely be arrested if you um, if you walked around naked if i if i took all my clothes off now and went outside and started walking around well two things would happen first of all i would die pretty quickly from from exposure all probably of, take a couple of hours all of the parts of my body would shrivel up certain parts would shrivel up much more and that would uh, be embarrassing for you and i would also be arrested for indecency or indecent exposure in a public place in a public place Probably if you did it here you'd be all right well in the garden as long as no one sees you as long as it's not a public place so you can be naked in the house or naked in a private area but as soon as you are in a public place then it is illegal and that's the law here in the uk but that's about it because you can pretty much wear what you want clothing wise. Uh, it's just the indecent, it's indecency law. Someone's asked, what's the meaning of curious? Uh, and somebody's answered it saying uh, uh, it means wonder. Yes, you can but, be cur uh, curious, you can be interested in something or yes. intrigued. Very interested in something. Hmm, hmm, curious. A, I wonder what that is. Yes, I'm very curious about that. I'm very curious about how the Internet works. Hmm, Mr. Duncan's adjusting the sound again. I'm very curious as to why he's constantly adjusting the sound. I wonder what it is. Anyway, let's carry on here. Hi, Mr. C, says Olga. Hello, Olga. Uh, corporal punishment. Well, we've talked about that. I think we're going to be moving on to uh, maybe capital punishment, I'll be Mr. Duncan. Or have we... Uh... That's it. Cor <laughs> corporal punishment is very harsh punishment, which is given out. But you survive 
even though you suffer a little bit of pain at the time being whipped that's another one they used to they used to whip, whip people on board uh, uh, in the military service if you were if you broke rules there they used to whip you didn't they <laughs> whip you uh, yes cat and nine tails some people would like the, that uh, as well the... some people would really love that you oh, could Lord. you could die from that if you got uh, uh, sort of a hundred lashes i think so uh, from a leather a long leather whip imagine that on your back yeah that steve was, uh, seems to know a lot about this no uh, just you... what i've seen on the television <laughs> and on certain channels late at night no so, that's not true <laughs> so that's what's in that big red box oh we've got doves behind us apparently have according we? to somebody here yeah but that that may have been 30 seconds ago <laughs> there's about 30 second delay capital punishment oh my goodness capital punishment capital punishment yes <laughs> what do you want to say about that mr duncan there are a lot of things you could say about capital punishment yes. capital punishment is the mm. ultimate punishment as far as some people are concerned the ultimate punishment is capital punishment yes. and that means you are sentenced to death not very nice there Mr. is Duncan. there is no <laughs> there's no way back from that there's no way back there's no parole there, there is no light sentence you you don't have capital punishment and then they change their mind afterwards uh, you can have capital punishment and then sit in a prison for many years ah that happens a lot uh, in the united states it does the united states have capital punishment but mm. quite often the person will wait to be executed oh. i i looked this up before we came on uh out of there are about 195 countries in the world i think and out of those 195 separate countries around 58 still have capital punishment wow and of those uh the majority of the uh the deaths uh, are in only a few countries only about six countries execute about 95 percent of, of all the people that are executed every year and they don't actually know all the full figures for the number of people executed around the world every year but they reckon it's somewhere in the region of 15 1600 but it could be a lot more because certain countries like china you, you can't get any figures on it i think in china uh, it's safe to say it's a lot well they reckon mm. it's the number one country in terms of the number of people uh who are I don't know how they uh, how they get rid of people in China in terms get of capital rid of punishment. I, don't, I can I tell you. They, I wonder if it's lethal injection. Well, I, I, can, I can tell you. I can. T I used to oh. live there. One of my friends actually witnessed an execution. He was invited along, and he was actually invited to the execution to watch someone being killed, being killed. And, and in that occasion, on that occasion, they used a lethal injection. So they just put poison into their bloodstream. The person slowly goes to sleep and then they die. Very nice. But in the past, in China, they used to use the good old fashioned gun. Gun to the head. You can't beat that one. That's it. That's or pretty, pretty quick. It's <laughs> over very quickly. It's just, uh, do you have any last words? That's it. Lights out. There are a lot of countries here. Most of the executions are only in about six of the countries uh, around the world. Uh, six of the countries out of the 58. But most of the 58 have the death penalty, but don't actually carry it out. It's sort of there, but there's, they may be only have only executed one person in the last 10 years or yes. something. So uh, the United States is actually a good example because they have the death penalty for many, many different crimes, often involving the taking of another person's life quite often although nowadays it is probably fair to say that fewer people are executed in the united states uh, than in the past but there are lots of people waiting on something called death row death row and that's they call it that means that they are awaiting execution yeah the, uh, in the us they execute about 20 23 or 25 people a year that's not many that's that yes compared to somebody like somewhere like iran who execute about a 
probably about a thousand a hmm. year. So and they have public executions in certain countries as well. Well, it's it's funny how we seem to be very light <laughs> light hearted about uh, this. Anyone got uh, anybody witnessed an execution? That'd be interesting to but know. But what I'm trying to, the point I'm getting to now is here in the UK, we used to have public executions all the time. And now we are going back a few hundred years. But they used to actually hang people in public outside the local jail. So you could go along. It was like a day out. It was like the family would go out and they would go to the the, the front of the local jail and they would actually stand there. Yeah. They, they would buy snacks and food. Yeah, it's it, true. Was, it, was, it was like a day out. They would say, oh, I think there's an execution today. Shall we go along and have a look? OK, then let's go and have a look at the person being hung. Well, thousands of year, people at, uh, a year used to be executed in this country hundreds of years ago. And sometimes it's for very minor crimes, mm. like stealing a chicken or something like yes. that. They used to hang you for stealing someone's chicken. Yeah, or, or stealing anything. Or as they, call, as they called it back then, cock theft. I think you've just made that up, Mr. Duncan. No, if you steal a cock, you will go to the block. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the last uh, the last date someone was executed in the UK or in Great Britain, I should say? In Great Britain, uh, in the UK. Well, you can say the UK. It's pretty much the same thing. There are slight differences. I looked this up, but uh, any idea? The last person to be executed in the UK, I think it was. Was it? Well, I, I can remember that the last woman to be executed, Ruth Ellis. Yes, you won't remember it, though, because that was around 1955. 1955 was the last execution of a, of a woman. Yes. So what about a man? The last man to be executed was around 1964 because they actually abolished uh, capital punishment in 1965. Wow. In, 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 uh, well, I say Great Britain because they did keep it in Ireland until a few until about the 1970s. Yes. Although they didn't actually execute anybody, but they did keep it. And right up until you wouldn't believe that right up until the end of the last century. So around 1998, there were still some crimes that were still in theory punishable by death, even in Great Britain. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, there were espionage, mm -hmm. uh, treason. Ah, and uh, for some bizarre reason, uh, setting fire to a ship in in a dock. Uh, <laughs> well, it's all it's all <laughs> punishable well, by death. We didn't actually but, execute anyone, but in theory, those particular crimes were still uh, subject to the death penalty. Well, it sounds to me guilty. yes. Tra if you are a traitor to your country, quite often the punishment will be harsh. Even now, yes. even now, even though we don't have the death penalty now in the UK. If you are a traitor or a spy, you will still go to prison for a very, very long time. Yeah, so you can understand really what's good. Well, now let's go back. Let's not go back to that Russian story. But uh, well, you they, are. I'm not. Were, uh, Steve is. I'm not. Allegedly, uh, the people that have died were allegedly. Uh, no, I think they actually definitely were spies, no, weren't they? They're not dead. They're not dead. Well, but in the past, people have been uh, sort of anyway. Yes, you know what I don't know what you're on about now. You're, you're, you're... So I think that's, you know, Mother Russia saying uh, we don't want you anymore. By the way, hello, hello to everyone watching in Russia at the moment. Hi. Hello. We love you all. It's nothing to do with us. It's all political. We don't want to get involved in that. We still just get on. We're just human beings getting getting on with our lives. Nicole Joffrey says, do you remember? The execution of Anne Boleyn. Well, I don't remember it personally because I wasn't alive. <laughs> no, she probably probably in a history lesson at school. Yeah, the, the the French, of course, loved to use the the guillotine, the guillotine. <laughs> oh, you know, that was a that was uh, particularly after the revolution. I think head chopping. Um, I think of all of the forms of execution. I think chopping people's heads off was always very popular. We did it for a while. We certainly did it abroad when we were invading other countries and also in France. Yes, they really did like chopping people's heads off. It was a preferred method. Apparently it's the one of the, the most humane methods, although uh, apparently you can be still alive. Uh, you're, you can still be conscious. They wreck they they think up to about 30 seconds after your head's been chopped off. 
So I think the most humane way is a, is a, is a bullet to the head. So, uh, you know, if you are <laughs> uh, caught, found guilty uh, of an offence in a country that still has capital punishment, then uh, request uh, the gun. I think that's the best. The gun. So, so yeah, but but what if they don't have it? What if it's just, you know, they Mind just you. they just tap you on the head with a shoe? Lethal Del injection's probably got to be uh, quite quick and painless, I would imagine. Well, that's just, you go to sleep, basically. You just fall asleep. <sighs> yes. I wish you'd keep still. No, I'm excited. Yes. Oh, no. oh, nervous. I'm nervous. Yes, you keep moving we're up. talking about capital no, punishment. People don't like the light, you see. You're blocking the light with what your big light? head. That, that, light, that light. Can you see that thousand? Where am I blocking the light to? Behind you. Why am I blocking you? Or what am no. I blocking? No, the, the, the reflection on the glass. Oh, I see. I'm having to explain the most basic of things. Oh, I don't know. I'm not a studio producer it's just the reflection on the glass but you didn't think about that before we went on mr duncan i did think about it and i thought mr steve's big head will block the way <laughs> so so yes um so there are many forms of execution but here in the uk we don't do it anymore but we do send people to prison for life and sometimes life doesn't necessarily mean that you'll go to prison until you die so life is just a very long sentence maybe 25 or 30 or 40 years but even if you have a life sentence you can be released later you can actually be released mm. before you die so which, even if it is a life sentence which is why some people still believe in the uh death penalty particularly if you've murdered somebody and the rest of the family then have got to still know that the person that's murdered uh, their partner or or a member of their family maybe even their children is still alive in a prison and there is always that possibility that they could be released at some point yes so you know i can i can understand why some people would be in favor of the death death penalty that's it um you know some yeah anyway i think we know i won't go into that any further i don't think oh well, we, we, we weren't we weren't intending to go into it any further so don't worry what comments have we got uh andrew says what about the execution of saddam hussein and his family by americans oh dear it was horrible yes. and it was shown to the whole world and afterwards they didn't find any chemical weapons exactly oh, andrew no well i'm not giving my opinion so we're not we're avoiding giving our opinion but i do understand what you're saying there very controversial and uh, yes should we be interfering in the in in other countries yes, yes anyway that's a, that's not. a that's a question for another time not today not not today steve i was into trouble well you will you won't be here i'll still be here it's just that you won't be here i think it was disgraceful i do agree that that was shown i must say i think mr steve has a smaller head than mr duncan that's not true i've measured my head my head is smaller than mr steve's mr steve's head it's like a giant pumpkin i might have the smaller head but i've got the bigger brain <laughs> but unfortunately he also has a big ass and that's where his brain is <laughs> thank you very much mr duncan i must say i think mr steve has a smaller head thank you julie thank you i'm gonna get a complex now and i'm gonna look in the mirror you're gonna get a, com a complex no, that, that's a that's a compliment people don't want to have a big head oh i suppose you're right people thank like, you people like thank to have a, have a small head but he has got a, i think they mean you're you're you've got a big head in terms of you're a big head mr duncan you're a know-it-all a Thank big head you. Oh, i'm not a know-it-all <laughs> i think that's what they mean i believe you have some expressions to do with laws and rules <laughs> yeah just here they are okay. i have sort of expressions idioms phrases connected with the word law and the word word rule okay then so let's have a look let's have a look at the first one people probably know what this one uh, refers to but it's called it, law and order so there's a phrase that's often used in society politicians use that a lot law and order it just means the strict enforcement of laws uh especially for controlling crime such as burglary murder things like that so when we talk about law and order the law bit refers to the crimes the order probably refers to the order in society so that people are behaving and conforming according to certain 
recognised ways of behaving. Uh, so you don't want people sort of rioting in the streets, sort of looting. Uh, so when you hear of a breakdown in law and order in a society, uh, that means that uh, a, a section of maybe a city has, 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 has gone mad and everyone's just doing whatever they want. And so you will often hear that phrase used, won't you, Mr. Duncan? You will. There's a breakdown in law and order. The, uh, but uh, sometimes political candidates, have you noticed that? If uh, they will often use that as one of their election pledges in order to get people to vote for them. So they might say, oh, if you elect me, I will enforce law and order and I will I will bring back law and order. They use that a lot, politicians, mm. in order to get themselves elected. Uh, the president praised the forces of law and order. Uh, so the forces of law and order, we're talking about the police, the people that enforce uh, the laws and order, the police, and of course, sometimes even the army. Uh, so that's the phrase law and order is used a lot. Of course, there's a television program in America called Law and Order. So if you want to know all about that, you could always watch that if you've got access to a that. Uh, so a I'm not referring to the television program. A TV show. Yes, there is a, a great TV show. I like it, but Mr. Steve doesn't like it i don't like it no anyway another one another one here Be so because it, can you believe we are already running out of time i mean we've talked too much about capital punishment that's why well that's the that but we've talked about it because it's i know it's I'm the just, subject today so if you haven't got law and order quite often you might have the law of the jungle Ooh. the law of the jungle so that means uh really survival of the fittest so you've got a situation where uh, normal rules and regulations and laws aren't necessarily being adhered to. Uh, it's where only the ruthless are surviving, for example, in business or in society where there's no care for other people. That phrase was coined by a famous author called Rudyard Kipling in his book Jungle Book 1894. We've uh, just had someone on the live chat say that as well. Oh, they must have looked it up like I did. <laughs> so law of the jungle, it just means the survival of the fittest. So here's some examples of where it might be used. In some parts of the city, some parts of the city, it's a no-go area for the police and the law of the jungle exists. Another example would be, because uh, you could, it doesn't have to be for individuals, it could be for like for companies as well, the way businesses operate. The recent price war amongst the airlines uh, was governed by the law of the jungle. So it's when there's a breakdown in normal rules and uh, of society, normally in sort of pockets or areas of a city. Uh, would you agree with that, Mr. Duncan? Hmm. Yes, sometimes when law breaks down, if there is a breakdown of law, then you might find that people act with using their own laws so they almost make up their own rules and laws in certain areas so this can happen especially in big cities you might have yes. areas where the, the the recognized law of the land is not recognized in that particular place you can have a law yes. of the jungle and you get people who are the strongest or, 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 or surviving and, and and ruling that particular mm. area so it's almost like uh, the wild you do get that in in cities in in uh, in the uk fortunately um, it's only in very small areas very small area so it's it's not everywhere it's just sometimes very isolated areas I knew somebody uh, in Wolverhampton who was a policeman yes Wolverhampton and, uh, but you could you could you could have any city Birmingham places like that uh, where and, and he used to tell me that they don't go into certain areas can you I, which I thought was astounding uh, because it was too risky for them to go there mm. and the law of the jungle mm. existed there so they've got a certain probably of maybe 100 or 150 people and uh, there was somebody sort of ruling the roost yes. which is another ex expression you can use there mm. okay, right then. so here's another one okay, an then. expression uh, the law unto the law unto so this is a phrase to describe someone who acts independently of or what is expected uh, or intended as normal 
So we're not talking about criminals, really. We're talking about somebody, a person who does what he wants or plays by his own rules. Uh, so, for example, uh, Jeff gets the sales results, but he's a lord unto himself. Hmm. So that means he uh, is very good at sales, but he doesn't necessarily follow the procedures that all his other colleagues do to get it. In fact, he might be sort of sailing close to the wind, which is an expression that means he's sort of on the verge of being maybe a bit unethical in the way that yes. he, he gets his sales. There is another word uh, you can use, one word that expresses that in one, one simple word, and that is maverick. Maverick, maverick, yes, maverick. maverick, yes. A maverick person, a person who is described as a maverick, quite often will play by their own rules. They can be described as being a law unto themselves. A law unto themselves. And, and people get away with it sometimes. So they push the rules to the limits of, of acceptability. And uh, maybe it's a little unethical at times, but they might get away with it. Um, here's another example. Uh, the marketing department are unaccountable for their spending. They are a law unto themselves. So that's using the example there in a company uh, where certain departments maybe get away with more than another department and that's seen as unfair. So another department might just, might say that they're, 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 they're a law unto themselves, that marketing department. I'm not, I'm not singling out marketing departments everywhere, but that's just an example. <laughs> I think we know that. Yes. Uh, march to the beat of your own drum. There's another example as mm -hmm. well. Or sail close to the wind. So a law. Mr. Duncan is a law unto himself when it comes to teaching English. I, yes, I am a bit of a maverick, a maverick when it com comes to teaching English. So a lot of people find my methods very unusual, but they are effective. Yes, very effective indeed. Well, let the people be the judge of that, Mr. Duncan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's another one. The law of averages. Another expression with the word law in. The law of averages. This is a popular interpretation of uh, a statistical principle. The law of probability. So the law of averages. Shall I say that again? <laughs> uh, popular interpretation of a statistical principle, the law of probability. Yeah. It I, just means even that. I, even I don't understand that. <laughs> it, the, the idea is that there's never just one result will happen all the time. So if you toss a coin, for example, a coin's got two sides to it. So if we tossed a coin, we normally say heads or tails. Yeah. I don't know whether every, people say that in other countries. See, heads or tails. So if I was to... Uh, throw a coin up in the air and it, it, it's only got two ways it can land if I do that a thousand times then probably around 500 times it'll land one way and 500 times it'll land the other but if I was only to toss that coin say three times it could land the same way up three times in a row so you might think that that was normal so that's the law of averages the law of probability that if you do something long enough it'll all average out or anything is possible uh, for example, so here's an example. It's rained for the last three days of my holiday, but the law of averages says it must be sunny soon. So if you're on holiday for two weeks, it's not going to rain every day. So if it's rained three days in a row, it's going to even out. It's going to average out. I suppose one way of putting uh, law it, of averages. one way of expressing it would be the, the possibility of the outcome. So the possibility of the outcome. There yes. are only certain possibilities. There are certain outcomes. So I'm moving that down because you're casting a terrible shadow on me. Um, yes, so the possibility of things happening. So the law of averages relates to the possibilities of certain things happening or the amount of times they will happen. Gamblers rely on on, on, on this uh, particular principle. If you gamble, you are always thinking of the law of averages. You're thinking that eventually, if I keep pulling on that, eventually <laughs> it's got to come up good for me. I've got to win eventually because so many people always win out of, I don't know, a million times you pull that lever on the slot machine. Maybe out of every thousand times, only one person will win. But that's why people keep going, because the law of averages says eventually that one will come up. But it might not come up for 3,000. 
But yeah. that's what the law of averages is about. Here's another example. It could be used the other way. Right? I mean, you could say, for example, somebody who doesn't wear a seatbelt in their car. Oh, I've never had an accident. I don't bother wearing a seatbelt. But of course, you're only likely to have an accident maybe once every 10 years in your car. Uh, so eventually your number will be up. The law of averages will, is saying that if you go out on the road and do a, a thousand drives, uh, you will only have an accident once. It would result in you dying through not having a seatbelt. But you're, you're playing, with, uh, playing with fire there and eventually the law of averages will say that eventually you will have an accident and you haven't got your seatbelt on, you'll, it'll kill you. Yes. So that's what we mean by the law of averages. So the chances, uh, and don't forget, gambling is a fool's game. A fool will gamble. So I, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Go on. No. What were you going to say? Nothing. Oh, but it's, it sounded like you were saying something. Well, yes, they say they say it's a fool's. It game, is. Yes. If you gamble, if you gamble all your money away, then you end up with no money. Well, I wouldn't say that you are the, the cleverest person on the planet. But some people do it. It's, it's, uh, it's silly if you do it and lose all your money. I'm going to take a good guess here that Stephen Hawking didn't gamble. I, get, I, I, I don't think Stephen Hawking ever went to a casino and gambled a lot of his money away because he's, he's pretty pretty sharp cookie up here. I think some people, uh, for them, it's a form of entertainment. And I think if you work, I think for some people who gamble, if you st if, if you're strict and you stick to a budget and you don't go outside that, then it can be seen as entertainment. People don't, though. Uh, some people do. People don't. It's an addictive. It's one of the biggest addictive pastimes that, that exists here in the UK. I'm going to say something now. I'm probably putting my neck on the line, but. I think it's disgusting the way in which gambling now is allowed in this country. It's everywhere. People are encouraged to gamble and it is addictive and it does cause problems. People borrow money so they can go gambling. So they borrow money because they're in debt so they can they can feed the addiction. And of course, they are encouraged to do it because television does it all the time. There are commercials all the time for gamble this, play this gambling, play this gambling Online game. Online gambling. Online gambling is everywhere. See, that's the problem. Some people could, can control it. But the online gambling and the adverts is really preying on the weakest in society. Mm. And... Uh, and uh, they need to be protected, really. Uh, interestingly enough, you see, we relaxed all our laws a, a number of years ago to allow online gambling to take place. But I was very interested to learn that Germany, you can't, you, it, you still can't do that. It's banned. And I, I agree with that. I yeah, don't think you should have. It's too. only been done so that the government can get extra taxes because okay. it's all taxed. Well, okay, I wasn't, I wasn't going into politics. I don't want to do politics. I'm just doing the... The it's a form of income from yes. the government. Yes, we, we, yes, we know. I'm not, I'm on about the actual fact that it's... Exploiting people. the weakest in society. Yes, well, that's, that's my original point, that it's foolish. If you gamble all your money away, it's foolish. It is a fool, foolish thing to do because I don't <laughs> gamble. I know that if I gamble all my money away, I'll have no money. So you, you know that it should be common sense. Oh, am I wrong? See, I don't really agree with the lottery. Uh, because that really is a way of recycling uh, money that's uh, that's being given out by governments to uh, uh, for people who are not working, social security benefits and things like that. It's well known that that's a way of recycling the money back into the system. Yes, yeah, so again, oh. I'm not talking about governments. I'm talking about the, the practice of gambling. Mm, I know so what not, you're doing. I'm not getting into political things because, you know, dear. That, that that here's a good one then oh we're on to we've run out of ones with law in okay we'll have a couple of more because we are running out of time we've got 10 minutes left it's, it's gone left. it's gone so fast it feels that i feel as though we've been controversial today i don't think so i don't think we're any more controversial than the normal well yeah i think you'll be interested in this one mr duncan okay then so these are words or expressions that have got the word rule in rule the roost oh okay rule the roost this is the the boss the, or the real boss the person that's really in charge especially at work or at home for example john may be the office manager but it's a, his assistant jenny who rules the roost around here 
<laughs> well, so the suggestion is that uh, I know I've used example words there. No, you've used uh, a woman. Why, why does the woman have to be the one that rules that you'll get well, you'll, you'll get complaints about this, Steve? Not That's from it. women, I won't. No, no, yeah, <laughs> oh, which is uh, all I'm concerned about. So the suggestion is that there is a boss in name, i.e., John, the manager. Uh, but he's not really. He's a bit of a weak manager, and the uh, his assistant Jenny is really controlling everything. Uh, so he's a weak manager. Uh, for example, in sports, you often hear this. He's a weak uh, footballers, for example. He's a weak manager. Uh, he lets his players rule the roost. So instead of him controlling the team, they're controlling him. So it can be used for a group of people as well. Yes, maybe to, maybe to lose your authority as well. If you have authority, maybe if you lose your authority because someone else is taking over. So that other person rules the roost. But the person who is supposed to be in charge loses their authority or their their strength. Uh, and in uh, it's very common in this country, I don't know whether it is in other countries, probably as well. In a marriage, uh, who is the boss? Who rules the roost in a marriage? Because oh. there's always one person that tends to dominate. So here we go. John and Mary are a lovely couple. But it's Mary who rules the roost in that house. <laughs> So in other words, the wife it really makes all the decisions. And in fact, interestingly enough, I've got lots of colleagues who are married. And I would say 100 percent of the time, it's the woman that's always <laughs> ruling the roost in the relationship. I I'm not joking. I'm not so, joking. I'm sorry if there are any ladies listening at the moment, any any women out there. It's Steve doing all of this. No, I'm okay. saying well done. You're controlling your husbands. Oh, I see. But, uh, but do you know but where that expression comes from, Mr. Duncan? Rule the roost. Yes. Well, I guess it, it comes from chickens. No. <laughs> ha! No. Wrong. I rule the roost. I, I know you don't. <laughs> I'm only joking. Rule the roost comes from uh, an expression. Rule the roast, apparently which referred to uh, the person who was in charge of the kitchen and the person who was in charge of the of the roast which was uh, which is cooking the big joint of meat uh, was the one that was really in charge of everything because everybody wanted you know a piece of the meat so that's where it comes from apparently so instead of rule the roost it's rule the roast that's where it comes from that doesn't sound right well i looked it up and that's what it said <laughs> Do you want another one? Have we run out of time? Let's have another one. I'm, I've got to give the answers to the mystery idioms in a moment. So maybe oh. I, I will um, I will leave you in a moment, Steve, to give your last well, on my own. couple of. What? Are you okay? alone with just me at the camera? Yes. I can get closer to the microphone. I can take everything. I can pull everything around. Ha <laughs> ha I'm going to take over. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I need a drink. Are you OK? <laughs> if, if anyone's just tuned in, no, this, this isn't this isn't a live stream from the local mental asylum. That's better. Dear me, we're going to have to get you some 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 practice of, of studio etiquette with, with with speaking, when to speak and how loud to speak. I rule the roost in front of this camera, Mr. Duncan. I think I think maybe <laughs> I rule the roost. Well, be careful what I say because you might not ask me back next week. Yes, <laughs> there's always that chance. <laughs> so another one, Steve. I just thought rule the roast could mean uh, something completely different as well, but we won't go into that. Right, what, here's another what? one. Rule out something. To rule out something or to rule something in. To rule out something, Mr. Duncan's uh, <laughs> is walking back to his studio. Yes. And uh, we don't, we don't need commentary. <laughs> no, the, co the commentary I'm making is that Mr. Duncan's walking back over a maze of wires and tripods. You wouldn't believe what's 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 it be in front of me here. So he's going. <laughs> I forgot what it is. There. To rule something out, to eliminate, prevent cancel something or someone as a possibility for example they ruled out the candidate for the job when they found out he'd had a criminal record so that's ruling somebody out there there, there there's no possibility uh, they're gone cancelled eliminated uh tom sprained his ankle so that rules him out of the football team on saturday 
Uh, you, of course, you can also rule somebody in as well. Uh, so you can rule somebody in or out, but it's usually used that way around to rule something out. Uh, if you rule somebody in, to rule something in, you can uh, an umpire at a tennis match would rule something in, would, would rule the ball in or rule the ball out. An umpire would do that. So you can use the expression in that way as well. But if you use it, uh, you can use it in another way to, to rule something in or out. Uh, so, uh, for example, that means uh, to eliminate or prevent something or somebody or a possibility. Uh, since the company profits warning, uh, nothing has been ruled in or out. So you can use that expression in that way. Rather than say something is ruled in or out, you can say some nothing is ruled in or out. So say you work for a company and the profits were going down, you might go to your manager and say, oh, do you think there's going to be any chances of job losses? And he might say, there's nothing ruled in or out at this stage. So that's using it in a slightly different way. So, Mr. Duncan, are you back in your studio? I certainly and are am. Are you ready to I give the, uh, the answers to your mystery idioms? Yes. Well, off you go. OK, then. So here we go. The mystery idioms. I am now back in my studio. We'll let Mr. Steve have a little rest because I think I think he really does need a little rest there. So, yes, mystery idioms. I did give you these last week but I forgot to give you the answers so I'm going to reveal the answers now to the mystery idioms would you like to see what the answers are I bet you can't wait so here is the answer to the first one many people got this one right so congratulations the answer to this one is false alarm yes congratulations to all those who got it right False alarm, the meaning, a fake report of a situation that appears serious or an emergency that has been falsely reported can be described as a false alarm. There is no fire, it was just a false alarm. And the second mystery idiom, here is the answer. For the high jump, yes. You have to say what you see. So there it is. There is the, the number four jumping over a pole. So four, the high jump. <laughs> the meaning to be in trouble or about to face punishment of some sort. Yes, that connects to today's subject. So to be in trouble or about to face punishment of some sort. A, per a person who has done something wrong might find themselves for the high jump. If you have done something wrong, if you have broken some rules, you might find yourself for the high jump. So there we go. I should have given you the answers last week, but I didn't. <laughs> Is Mr. Steve still there or has he gone? <laughs> I wonder if Mr. Steve is still there. Let's have a look. Is Mr. Steve still there? Oh, there he is. Mr. Steve. I'm still here. Hello. <laughs> it's lovely Actually, I to... sneaked off back into the studio because I can't hear you very well from here. We missed you. Did you? Yes. I can't say I missed you very much, Mr. Duncan. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I was glad to see the back of you, to be quite honest. Good riddance, I said, when you went off to myself. <laughs> not really I'm only joking because I do want to come back next week Mr Duncan are you coming out here to say goodbye or are you staying in there oh I think Mr Duncan's coming out he is he's uh he's uh winding his way through all these cables and leads and tripods again I'm coming and out he's gonna push me over that's it because he wants to take control. No, the reason why I'm pushing Mr. Steve over <laughs> is so so his lovely round head will block the reflection of the light behind him. No, 
that, that way that way that's it there we go so i hope you've enjoyed today's live stream we had a lot going on today so many things happening we talked about all sorts of things rules laws and don't forget you can follow the live chat again later when this is made available on youtube and of course there will be subtitles later on as well i hope so anyway so there should be subtitles and you will be able to follow the live chat again because youtube has allowed it to be done isn't that lovely we haven't had any complaints today have we mr duncan no complaints good, good. i i like it when there's no complaints <laughs> so we will see you next week um actually i will be back on wednesday but you won't no i won't be here this wednesday so this wednesday night 10 p.m uk time live english late and live oh my goodness we are late and live was it late and alive <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of both <laughs> right i shall toddle off steve shall will, i steve will toddle off toddle off okay then and uh, allow you to say goodbye to everybody in your own special way okay i will actually go back to the studio and you can say goodbye oh all right then oh, he's off again he doesn't stay for two minutes he's flitting about like a little bird well i hope you've enjoyed uh, today's show uh and the view outside i'm going to go out and maybe clear a bit of snow so that i can go to work tomorrow so it's goodbye from me and hopefully Mr. Duncan is back in his studio and I will see you all next Sunday. Bye bye. Bye, Mr. Steve. There he goes. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wasn't that lovely? And I hope you enjoyed the snowy background because we had lots of snow last night. Would you like to see the snow angel again? Well, we will finish on that. And of course, the live chat is still up and running. Thank you very much for your messages today so many people tias says thank you so much for today's lesson long win or Nijuin says it's 5 a.m really is it really 5 a.m in vietnam anna says bye shira blade says thanks for another live stream offman says i think you are not machines but you can tell me about the temperature there it is about two below zero it is minus two degrees celsius at the moment analytic says rest in peace stephen hawking oh thank you very much for that that's very nice of you sergio says great stream today cheers and also belarusia thanks for following today duong julie g louise wow so many people also evans evans smith thank you very much and i will see you later the snow angel is on his way <laughs> this is mr duncan saying i will catch you on wednesday night 10 p.m uk time and of course i will be back next sunday 2 p.m uk time 10 p.m on wednesday 2 p.m. on Sunday, UK time. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of the English language saying thanks for watching me today. Thanks for getting involved. And of course, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Ta-ta for now.